Hey guys, and welcome to the kind of summary for this whole video series, as we are now going to take a look at the consequences of your choices in the testing tab. I've put together a little inline six here, or it's not that little, it's 2.8 liters, rather modern, not too over the top, a bit sporty. Um, and yeah, so let's go through the individual um, stats of the engine and see what they all depend on. The first stat we are going to take a look at is uh, power and uh, that one is more or less impossible to go into all the dependencies because everything leads to the engine making power, right? You construct the engine in order to make power, to move something. Um, so let's just take the biggest dependencies and um, those would be um, higher capacity gives you more power as well as uh, a higher cam profile uh, very important will allows you to make more power at a higher RPM raising the RPM limit would make you uh, more power as well if the cam profile is tuned accordingly and then we have fuel mixture and uh, a richer setting there will give you a more um, powerful engine but also a less economical engine. Higher compression makes the engine overall more efficient but requires more run. Um, ignition timing does basically the same thing and um, in general a better fuel system will give you the option to make more power. Then of course better heads uh, in the top end section have less friction at higher RPM which then again allows you to uh, make more power and also you have um, the option to choose more valves which allows the engine to breathe much more freely. The least important bit is probably exhaust tuning and if you have a properly set exhaust size it will guarantee that your engine um, has enough back pressure in order to make resonance phenomena work properly and give you that little extra kick of power. The next stat I want to talk about is lifespan and um, this is a bit more difficult I would say because it's um, you have to know your engine pretty well in order to do well there and um, well let's start off with the easiest uh, change you can make in order to give your engine a, a longer lifetime and that is change the RPM limit to a lower setting. Um, not revving it as high will definitely help uh, put less stress on the engine and thus it will survive longer. In the same vein of, of that change would be to use shorter stroke because speeds within the engine and thus friction within the engine is to some degree determined by uh, the stroke you're using. A smaller stroke will make the pistons um, move slower and thus have less engine stress. Also, um, once you drop beneath a certain smoothness value, you actually get a penalty to um, your lifespan. So watch that. And just generally, if you want to have a higher lifespan, go for higher quality parts and a higher quality setting. The next stat is responsiveness. And responsiveness uh, can be increased by mainly a better fuel system. Um, using a fatter fuel mixture, a richer fuel mixture, um, having higher ignition timing, that's pretty important there, uh, in our model at least. Next up, loudness. And loudness is pretty simple, as uh, putting on mufflers uh, trivially uh, solves a lot of problems, making stuff uh, less loud. Also, decreasing exhaust diameter will help you. Um, those six inch pipes definitely don't do a good job at dampening um, the loudness from the engine. Also, um, the intake is pretty important. Don't forget about that. Uh, if you use a race intake, then expect to hear uh, explosions right out of the engine. Um, also, putting kittens in uh, your exhaust system will indeed uh, muffle the sound as their furry hair um, slows down the air and uh, yeah, you get, you know about that, right? Smoothness is our next stat and uh, a bit less obvious, I would say. Uh, basically, a a uh, lighter engine will always be the more smooth one because there's less mass moving. 
Um, so a shorter stroke and a smaller bore will help. But also um, bottom, the bottom end parts are contributing by their weight as those are the parts that really move. And a little offset in weight and then balancing there um, will have a pretty big effect. So uh, choose higher quality and lighter parts there. Uh, don't forget that bottom end parts now are also scaling in weight um, with engine size. So keep that in mind. Um, also, uh, the smoothness is amplified by a higher bottom end part quality. Next stat is uh, service costs and um, lowering your capacity, uh, not your capacity, but the engine's capacity, will definitely make for a lower service cost as there's not uh, as many, uh, much stuff to change. Um, also, having an intake which doesn't suck in stones definitely helps. So going for a standard intake will significantly reduce your service costs not having as many oil changes and stuff um, and a race exhaust there is pretty bad for service costs as you can easily try out yourself. Um, then the fuel system is pretty important as well as this is the main contributing factor to any kind of service basically and um, the choice of top end parts are, is also a big factor. Talking about emissions, um, again the kittens, catalyzers, are taking a nose full of those harmful emissions and um, convert them into stuff which is less harmful. So yeah, you will definitely want to attach a catalyzer. Then the fuel system and its efficiency will definitely help reducing emissions as does a higher air to fuel ratio. Um, using less fuel usually results in less emissions. Not always though, if you go too extreme then um, it can be um, changed the other way around again. Then uh, compression. Well, compression is a bit tricky as a higher compression results in um, hotter burn and hotter burn usually means that you create more of those um, bad gases. Then you have also to consider the head and block material and of course your cam profile as well. If you run a very high cam profile then it will change um, emissions uh, because of efficiency uh, again. Economy. And for economy we have something similar to emissions. They usually go hand in hand. Um, the fuel system, the cam profile, but in this case the cam profile is much more important than for the emissions. Uh, the air to fuel ratio again, compression, ignition timing, head type, pistons, uh, they shouldn't forget that you can uh, use low friction cast pistons. And uh, exhaust tuning is also changing economy, uh, don't forget that. Uh, there are instances um, where you want to go for a too small exhaust size, slightly too small, to limit your engine a bit to get um, the perfect back pressure and resonance at a lower RPM where you actually cruise. This um, gives you a better economy while sacrificing a higher rev power. Octane is our last stat and uh, for the octane setting basically a higher cam profile gives you a bit of uh, leeway and a better fuel system um, decreases your octane requirements. Uh, more fuel does help indeed. Uh, lower compression is one of the main factors actually, so um, if you run into octane problems just lower compression as a first go, that usually is the most um, simple solution. A lower ignition timing gives you less run requirements. A smaller bore helps as well, getting octane requirements down. Um, and having a, a better top end, um, better extraction and um, intake uh, does indeed help to lower octane just a bit. And uh, then of course exhaust tuning. Uh, you m might forget about that but uh, fool around a bit with this setting um, in order to, to see what it does for octane. Well, there can be quite significant uh, significant difference actually. There are not many parts left to show you but um, the new testing tab which uh, we'll see quite a bit of improvement also uh, for in the next update actually 
Um, I want to show you a bit of the controls because all of this is pretty much unexplained till now. So let's start off with um, the first non-obvious part. You can see power talk here. Knock sensor, if it starts knocking you will see the lamp. Um, the first non-obvious one is oil pressure and oil pressure basically um, gives you an estimate of um, if the engine is still working fine or if it's uh, put under heavy load and things start to go wrong. As long as it's in the green um, and not wiggling around like crazy, you're doing well. So let's see what happens with this engine which didn't put out any warnings. And you can see that the needle is very high up in the green, but it's still, there's no problems there. It can go to the rev limiter and you see it starts wiggling around a bit, but not too badly. And let me now change one option and see what happens. I just go to the bottom end and change from forged pistons to cast pistons. And now let's start again. And uh, revving up a bit. You see that? It starts wiggling around at 8000 now. And pretty badly. Should we see what happens if I rev to the end? That is pretty insane. We are right before failing. Uh, you shouldn't run the engine there. Um, and I can show you... Yes, this indeed gave you a warning. And if we check out the new score for lifespan, you see... Um, that one is pretty bad compared to what we would get with that one. So um, this is an indicator for something going wrong and being too stressed. The next thing that needs showing is the pressure gauge and um, that one basically shows you how open your throttle is right now in this release. Um, it will be working much better than right now as soon as we add turbos and um, basically zero is your atmospheric pressure that means you have no boost and no vacuum while below zero means that you have a negative pressure which um, this allows your engine from breathing properly for the turbos you want to be going into the positive region here so that you actually have boost all right, I think yeah, that's all for now. This concludes the whole series of videos showing some of the changes in the engine designer. And uh, I hope you learned a bit and enjoyed it. So, cheers.